on business. Yeah. I lose money on this, but I sell them for 20 cost me $21. Mm. And I'm just trying to distribute them. Right. Understood. Uh, so, so uh, also, uh, backing up to 1986, I had been on a fast in the steps of the Capitol with three other veterans for 47 days, a water-only fast in protest of Reagan's policies of funding the countries in Nicaragua. Hmm. And while we were on the steps, October 5th, 1986, uh, there was a, a CIA plane shot down over Nicaragua, um, uh, um, dropping supplies to the countries in southern Nicaragua. The plane was shot down and the uh, kicker was actually par parachuted to safety and was captured. And uh, when we went down after the fast, uh, three of the fasters went down to Nicaragua for the fast. We met with the kicker, who was now in prison. His name was Eugene Hassenfoss. Okay. He was working for the CIA. He'd been a kicker in Laos during the Vietnam War. So um, he told us all about his 10 flights, kicking arms to the countries, coming out of the Ilopongo Air Base in El Salvador. Someone went to punch a uh, uh, what's the name of the base in Honduras? Um, Pascarola or something like that. Uh, two cultures that were then going to be going into Nicaragua from northern, uh, into Nicaragua, northern Nicaragua from southern Honduras, and others flew in from us, from San, um, uh, Costa Rica, and then the plane would come up and drop the supplies in southern Nicaragua to contra bands that were rolling around. So we had that evidence. We also had the Bill of Lading signed between the Salvadoran government and the Concord Naval Weapons Station for X number of millions of bullets, mortars, mm -hmm. rockets, and we knew some of those weapons were also going to uh, be dropped into Nicaragua from El Pango. And they were, they were, these munitions were coming from? From Con Concord. All coming from Concord. And, okay. And I also moved on those trains and trucks out to the ships. And you were... And you I'm a could trained lawyer, so I like to gather my evidence and develop the evidence here. Okay. Links. So, uh, all summer in 1987, we had visuals going on day and night at this site, on this highway in the Bisex Concord, California, Concord Naval Weapons Station. Uh, and arrests began immediately on June 10th as people would be blocking trucks. They didn't block the trains at first, but they mm -hmm. blocked the trucks. Meaning that they temporarily blocked the trucks waiting for the police to arrest the blockers. But we would stand along the tracks and uh, for the trains with signs saying yeah. death trains, death trains, death trains, violation of Nuremberg. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I was a part of the support group. I was the jail support group. I was, you know, I was just there uh, as part of the vigil. And then um, there was one guy that blocked a train uh, maybe in July or August. And um, the, tra the train speed limit is five miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And there's always two spotters, they call them, on the front of the locomotive. To, and, radio contact with the engineer at the rear of the locomotive and uh, the, their job is to make sure the tracks are clear because these trains are carrying only highly explosive munitions. Yeah. They're not to hit anything. A car, a cow, a pig, a drunk, yeah. or a person sitting there protesting. And I had been a uh, installation security officer in the military. All the trainings they provide for uh, officers who are in charge of securing air bases. Okay. So I, I knew the protocol for how security works at these bases. And you would never run a train, a munitions train, into anything. Yeah. And also there were 350 armed Marines to protect the train and trucks <laughs> in this base. Mm -hmm. so there's, I was going to go to prison for a year. That's what the... Oh, I, 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 so I began the plan to start blocking the trains on September 1st, which was the anniversary of the fast of the year before. Okay. And two other veterans were going to join me. 
So we were going to escalate the protest. Although there had been one guy that did block a train in the summer, as I was starting to say, and the train simply stopped. The two spotters got off the front of the train, pushed the guy off the track. He had a cross with the name of a victim on it. Mm -hmm. They just threw him off the tracks, cracked the sign over their knee, got jumped back on the train, and resumed at five mile an hour speed to the, to the port. I mean, they did not. They did not perceive that as being. An, it was just an annoyance. Yeah. And. Uh, so, uh, somebody left me a chip. <laughs> hey, George. So, 